This video is dedicated to the people of the Steam Railroading Institute, who worked hard to restore Pier Marquette 1225. I also like to give a shout out to Railway Productions, as we'll be filming where they had since 2006 to the present day. More on that in the coming program. Owasso, Michigan, 8 o'clock in the morning. Like they have done since 1985, workers at the Steam Railroading Institute ready Pier Marquette's 1225 for the winter steam excursion. Yet long before the beginning, rail fans and steam enthusiasts gather to see 1225 prepping for the day ahead. Twenty-two miles north of Owasso is the small town of Ashley, where the winter steam excursion stops for the event Ashley holds every year. Yet to anyone, this town gives off a special Christmas feel to the excursion. After all, Owasso and Ashley is the route that the winter steam excursion uses, but the original route was in fact to another town north of Owasso. In this program, we'll take a look at the Pier Marquette 1225 the route it once and now takes, and how it was off the rails for some time.
hear Marquette's 1225, a 284N1 Berkshire, has been around since 1941 when it was built by the Lima Locomotive Works in Lima, Ohio. 39 of these Berkshires were built with only two that remain today. They are 1223 and 1225. 1225 served the Pier Marquette from 1941 to 1947 as a result of the Chesapeake and Ohio merger. Since the merger, 1225 continued to serve the CNO until being officially retired in 1958. 1225 was placed on display at the University of Michigan, where exactly at the U of M, it was hard to say. It wasn't until 1982 when a Michigan preservation group moved 1225 to a former Ann Arbor steam shop in Owasso. From there, 1225 underwent restoration for three years. Later in 1985, 1225 moved under its own power since it was retired in 1958. Two sources that were researched showed 1225 being retired in two different years. It was hard to say which sources were right. The shop in Owasso is located next to the Great Lake Central Railroad, a short line stretching from Petoskey down to Ann Arbor, where it connects with the Ann Arbor Railroad. The Ann Arbor Railroad is just one of many other short lines in the U.S., called Watco, which includes the Grand Elk Railroad in West Michigan. This company is similar to that of the Genesee in Wyoming, as they too also have other smaller railroads in the U.S., which includes the Michigan Shore, Marquette Rail, and the Mid-Michigan Railroad. The only difference is that the GNW have railroads in Europe, while Watco has a couple of others in Canada. As for the location, originally the Polar Express, as everyone refers to it as, once ran from Owasu to Chesenin, Michigan. The route to Chesenin was about 15 miles away from Owasu, but the route for the Polar Express excursion to Chesenin was downgraded and can no longer support the 1225. So the Steam Railroading Institute started looking at other towns along north on the GLC. Historically speaking, the SRI needed a specific small town that has railroad history. It was hard to say which towns they looked at, almost as if there wasn't anything about a location change. But the village of Ashley was one of the potential locations for the Polar Express excursion. There was much discussion about making Ashley the new stopping point for the winter excursion, but the decision was made final as the village of Ashley was now the official stopping point for the Polar Express. Earlier in the spring of 2006, Railway Productions once filmed Pier Marquette's 1225 on a spring steam excursion. The excursion ranged from Cadillac to Owasso and back again. We'll be filming along the same stretch of track as we head to Ashley and back to Owasso, as well as seeing some before and after shots from the spring of 2006 to the winter of 2023. Back in present-day Owasso, crews readied the Polar Express for its run to Ashley. Pierre Marquette's 1225 will be the lead locomotive making the journey to Ashley. Along with PNLX GP40 2 WH number 57 from Precision Locomotive Leasing in the rear, which will be making the return trip to Owasso. As for rolling stock, the train is composed of three cabooses. A first class private car, parlor private car, 1950s lounge cars, 1950s dining car, deluxe 1950s coach cars, and regular 1950s coach cars. 
This will be a 19 car long train, which includes Pierre Marquette's 1225 and its tender, and PNLX 57. As we wait for 1225 to pass, we get a shot of PNLX 57 pulling the first line of cars off the siding. We also hear the SRI on the police scanner relaying the number of cars as they pull off the siding. Four cars to go, 57. Four more. Down to three. to go 57. PNLX 57 stops at the turntable to line it up before it can reverse further. They finally get the first set out, while we now see Pierre Marquette's 1225 pulling ahead. Two of the three cabooses are in Ann Arbor Railroad lettering, while the third is in the paint scheme of the Chesapeake and Ohio. This is just one of many that may still be around. Now that 1225 has cleared the switch, PNLX 57 pushes the first set of cars onto the main line. Last car 57, one. Half a car. At the gate, passengers wait as the train is still being readied. As we stand where they are, we now see the next set 
of cars being pulled out of the siding. Now that the train is all hooked up, the passengers are then let in so they can get to their car's class. Tickets for the Polar Express excursion go fast, as everyone wants the chance to ride the Polar Express excursion to Ashley. Ticket prices range from $70 per person in coach class to $5,500 for a party of 26 in the Frank Thompson private car. While the passengers board the train on one side, an SRI employee brings passengers to the cabooses on the other side. Fun fact, the 1225 was the pattern locomotive in Tom Hanks' animated movie, The Polar Express. In 2006, when Railway Productions filmed the 1225, the tender sported the Polar Express lettering when Railway Productions filled it in 2006 in Cadillac. The tender in 2023 now shows the Pier Marquette lettering. We'll be filming the train from Owasso all the way north to Ashley. Departing Owasso, we'll be stopping at the railroad crossing on M21. We then head north to the Mason Road and North Delaney Road intersection and north again to West Wilkinson Road and North Smith Road. Heading north again, we leapfrog ahead of the Polar Express to King Road. There, we'll be doing a drive-by shoot of the Polar Express. We'll be passing the small towns of Carlan and Elsie to the west as we head north and then west to the town of Bannister. We then head into the town of Ashley where the Polar Express excursion stops and lets the passengers off for two hours to explore the town of Ashley in a 1940s Christmas style. We'll then follow the train back to Owasso as it will now be led by PNLX number 57 for the return trip to Owasso. We'll be stopping at the crossing on M57 to shoot as the train returns to Owasso. We'll then be passing through the small town of Elsie as we head to the North Meriden Road crossing to wait for the excursion train. From there, we then head directly back to Owasso to the Steam Railroading Institute Museum to film the excursion train's return. During the trip to Ashley, as we follow the Polar Express train, police units from the Great Lakes Central Police will be at various railroad crossings along the route to control and enforce. After all, rail fans will be at almost every crossing along the stretch of the excursion. It is now 10 a.m. and 1225 has been given the signal to hook up to the rest of the train. Uh, all right, they gave you all clear. They're backing the train up now. So just to remind you to all those, and just to remind you to all you fans out there, 
brings us whistle three times, meaning they're going to back up. Take a look at there. There are any ones that left out. That's one, one two for stop, two two for forward, and three two for backward. 425. These guys are lucky. One car, 1225. Alright, one, two, three. As we film 1225 backing up, she gives us a blast of steam, making it appear to be foggy. Oh, oh boy, here comes steam. All hooked up and ready to go, 1225 is given the green light to head for Ashley. Express starts to gain speed, we hop into the car to follow it to Ashley. As we stop at the M21 crossing, we can see a line of spectators waiting to film the Polar Express.
now stop at the Mason and Delaney Road intersection ahead of the excursion. At almost every railroad crossing, one can see characters from different Christmas movies. The Grinch in this shot appeared to be one of them. We are now on Keene Road as we run alongside the Polar Express as it approaches Carlan from the east, now heading west. Leapfrogging ahead, we pass Carlin and the town of Elsie further to the north as we head for Bannister. We soon get a view of the Polar Express from across a field. As it appears to be a small speck, the Polar Express may seem slow at first, but at 20 miles an hour, it quickly comes into view as it approaches the town of Bannister. We now arrive at Ashley, where the Polar Express excursion makes its approach into the town. Also there are the rail fans that have already arrived ahead of the excursion, as did we. Including other spectators and event goers, as the Polar Express pulls into Ashley.
As the Polar Express excursion comes to a stop, we can hear an SRI employee over the police scanner wanting a blast of the whistles from both engines. That will work, 1225. Can I get a horn and whistle, please? Passengers soon disembark their train and set foot on the village of Ashley Country Christmas. As soon as all of them got off, the crew backs the train off of Sterling Street and Oak Street for everyone to cross to the south part of town and vice versa. As stated earlier, the town of Ashley was chosen as the stopping point for the Polar Express train. Since they have been chosen, the village of Ashley holds an event called Ashley Country Christmas. They transform Sterling Street from a business district to a 1940s Christmas village dial. The event holds over 50 stands in the town on Sterling Street, which includes a haunted attraction shops, food vendors, and more. The event also includes Pier Marquette 1225, where people are given the opportunity to look inside the cab of the 1225, including the chance to get their picture on the front end. We also get a view of Sterling Street in 2023. We are standing on the same location Railway Productions once stood when they filmed the 1225 returning to Owasso from Cadillac. The shot taken today is in the winter of 2023, where Ashley is a Christmas village event. But in spring of 2006, Pierre Marquette's 1225 ran through Ashley returning to Owasso. 
it's hard to imagine to see that this was all different in two different seasons in two different years. On North Sterling Street is one of the buildings that are a part of the event. It holds an entertainment hall, a room for arts and crafts, and even a room that holds a model train layout. Inside, we see what it has to offer us with its running model trains and village. The collection of ceramic buildings we see here are from a brand called St. Nicholas Square. They are nice pieces to collect and can be displayed for looks. But the scene of these pieces take a step further when an O-gauge train layout is added. This is absolutely stunning when they add a model train set to give it more of a holiday feel. At one time, this 1,500-foot display was created and owned by a man named Don Rivet. He constructed the entire layout in the basement. After passing on in life, his family donated the layout for all of the country Christmas goers to enjoy. For entertainment, two magicians perform in a separate room showing off their magic. During the time we were filming on December 2nd, Joshua Wilde was performing for the audience. People can also see a juggler on the street of Ashley Country Christmas. The juggler is also part of the Ashley Country Christmas event. Back to the outside, we visited one of the sheds on the list of events that were going on in Ashley. This shed houses glass making, where we can see the glass maker hard at work creating solid glass ornaments. I'm going to do the loop, and 
I've got my little punty here to hang on to. Yeah. Right? Unfortunately, we were unable to get images of the finished product, but we can only imagine what they look like when they're finished. After the two-hour stay at Ashley, everyone is called to the crossing for the return trip to Owasso. It is now 1.10 p.m and the passengers wait for Pier Marquette 1225 to pull ahead to where they can board the train to return to Owasso. As they wait, they take the opportunity to film the 1225 on their phones or cameras. As the passengers board the train, we return to the road to follow the train back to Owasso. That's handy. That's ours right there. The first stop on the return voyage, we stop at the railroad crossing on M57. The lead locomotive for the return trip is now PNLX number 57. As the train passes, we head on down the road passing through Elsie. We then stop to film the train at the crossing on North Meriden Road.
we now leapfrog all the way back to Owasso. During our wait, the bells and red lights come on as the train gets closer. But as they came on, drivers didn't stop regardless of there being no gate, as well as the bells and red lights that were active. One rail fan that posts videos of live stream moments of people passing over grade crossings, regardless of alerting them of an oncoming train, refers to this mode of action as Darwin candidates. We see three examples as the flashers came on. The train has finally returned to Owasso, and Pier Marquette 1225 gives us one final blow of the whistle. Twelve twenty-five is then unhooked from the train and is moved forward to top off its water tank in the tender. As we head into the yard of the museum, the passengers disembark their coaches and cabooses to return home. Pierre Marquette 1225 will make another run to Ashley later in the evening and be put to bed for the following day. Our day in East Central Michigan has come to an end.
we've seen the Polar Express, walked where railway productions filmed, and got to see Ashley in a 1940s Christmas style. If you enjoyed seeing this train in action, it will most likely be on your list. Bonus footage is coming up at the end of the credits, so don't go too far. If you want to ride the Polar Express to Ashley, the Steam Railroading Institute has a website you can visit to reserve your seat for the day of the excursion. You can also donate to the SRI if you would like to do so. Pier Marquette 1225 and Chicago and Northwestern 175 are two steam locomotives the SRI have. CNNW 175 is currently undergoing restoration and funds from you can help put CNNW-175 back on the rails. For more information or to donate, visit their website at michigansteamtrain.com. Tickets for the Polar Express excursion go on sale in the midsummer and sell out fast, so be sure to reserve your seat today. And remember, just a small fund from you can go a long way. Big Daisy all clear. They're back in the drain up now. And just to remind you to all those, and just to remind you to all you rail fans out there, the drains are whistled three times, meaning they're going to back up. And just to remind you, for anyone who left out, as much 
One two for top, two two for forward, and three two for backward. Four twenty five. These guys are lucky. One car, 1225. Alright, one, two, three.
people, people are all waving at us. <laughs> but I, I ain't supposed to wave back. That will work, 1225. Can I get a horn and whistle on that, please? Here's the, here's the other problem. Where is Zach and Alison? 
And which one? And which ones are? We got we got off like right there, so or got on right there. So. Andy, that's ours right there.